Welcome to the Sci-Fi Podcast. Come for a drink, but stay for the speculation. We're talking the news that emerged from San Diego Comic-Con last week. And wow, there has been news. So tequila is called for, but grab whatever drink you want. It's your choice. As always, this is the Sci-Fi Podcast. Greetings, welcome to the Sci-Fi Podcast, the podcast that tries to be a pub, and perhaps someday a pub that tries to be a podcast. As always, we are looking for customers that can come visit our bar. I'm looking at you, whoever you are listening to this podcast, because if you're passionate about something and want to be on a podcast, well, let us know, because this bar is all about community. If you want to help us out, please consider leaving a five-star review wherever you find the show, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. My name is Joel, I'm the so-called owner of the sci-fi pub cast so to speak and today we have uh carrie simpson and derek bb our regular staff members and hi guys hey hey yes uh so we about to hit the record button a few minutes before we did that we uh we discovered that uh one of the Star Trek legends from the original series and the movies, uh, 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 Nichelle Nichols, has passed away. Apparently, it's been it's uh, it's breaking on Twitter right now, and we send condolences to her family and to her fans and friends. So there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but besides that, Carrie, how's life in Southern Ontario? It's not Southern Ontario. That where I'm at, <laughs> Southern California. I um, well, it's it's. A, a bit muggy. Uh, and I, I realize I say that I, I realize I'm a wimp when it comes to humidity because I say muggy and then I talk to friends on the East Coast and they laugh at me. But yeah, it's it's nice. It it's a bit warm. Um, I am getting over a cold, so I will try to, to remember to mute myself when I have to you know try and get current out of my throat and all that. So. Hey, it happens. It happens. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't mean to bring an extra an, an extra guest to the to the podcast today, Joel. But Kermit, Kermit may show up. Okay, that that may happen. I'm sorry to hear that. I but thought you were okay. gonna say tequila, but you know, COVID happens. So uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no uh, I've been sober for like a week. It's weird. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Gary? What's wrong with you, really? <laughs> you're, you're no Derek. Speaking of which, uh, we have Derek from uh, the foothills of Pennsylvania. How are you doing, Derek? I am not doing well because I did not win the billion-dollar Mega Millions jackpot that I was fully expecting to win. Oh wow! Well. Did you sacrifice to the? Did you appropriately sacrifice to the uh, to the uh, lottery fairies? No, but I did buy sixty dollars of tickets. <laughs> so. Wait, you spent you spent sixty dollars on something? What? Yeah, it well, wasn't okay. Related? Well the, well, the jackpot kept getting not one, so I spent twenty and then twenty and then twenty oh, each time. Okay, I was even I, on I Zillow. Think Derek, I think Derek may have COVID, not me. Yeah, yeah, that's just that's just I, brutal. He's clearly not feeling well. <laughs> I was even on Zillow looking at you know real estate in Los Angeles. I found myself a nice little million dollar condominium that's right next to Paramount Studios because you know I obviously. Uh, once I become a billionaire, I'll be making my TV show out of my own pocket if need be. So I want to be close to the studio so I can visit the set all the time. Oh, God. You realize that not all writers have anything to do with the actual TV show that, that they that they write. Yes, but if I'm paying for it, <laughs> I'll have as much to do with it as I want to. Yeah, he's self-publishing his own uh-huh. TV show. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Hey, if, let's not like you're in the market, okay, Derek? If you win the next lottery, now keep in mind, you can always buy a pub. You know the sci-fi podcast. I can actually sell it to you for a you know for a price, but because it has a lot of value to it. A lot and then of, you can live, and then you can live above the pub, yeah. and save on rent because the pub will, will the pub will give you will generate income. Yeah. Or yeah. I could buy Paramount Studios and live there. Oh uh, uh, no! I actually own Paramount you know, stock. <laughs> 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 Same retirement fund. And, and I, as much as I like, as much as I like Paramount Studios, the the area around there isn't always the best. I mean, is that I, why all the places I, I was looking at had gated doors and everything? Very likely, yes. <laughs> wow, just wow! I should ask you this, Derek. How's our <laughs> kitchen doing in our old pub here at the Sci Fi Podcast? Well, I wasn't paying too much attention to it because I thought I was getting the billion dollars. So, you know, it's actually 
cleaner than it normally is for some reason, even though I wasn't doing anything in it. It's it's almost as if somehow I make it worse by being there. But that doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, okay, I, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I take that. That's better than previous uh, conversations we had in previous episodes. So, uh, yeah, at least the kitchen's still there. You know, I'm an easy man to please. Pretty low maintenance. I, uh, I did whip up a quick treat at the last second. And because it was the last second, the rhyming isn't great. But I made infinity s'mores. Because s'mores sound, sounds like stones, right? S'more, stones, sure. stones, s'more. And, uh, you know, like normally a s'more would be marshmallow and chocolate. But this is a mystery ingredient. It's, you know, not marshmallow. Who knows what it is? On an unrelated subject, you know when you uh, defrost the freezer and all that white stuff in there, like, melts out as water? Mm -hmm. Well, with ours, it didn't It didn't so much become water as this kind of, like, weird white paste. But that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. I, 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 oh, I can't. God. That's it. I'm having a drink right now. <sighs> It's my uh, that's I'm that's my coping mechanism. Coffee, so yeah, <laughs> I wish I could drink right now, but I can't. Oh man, oh man. Uh, guys, with me, I got nothing new. I'm just full on economic mode, reading lots of legal theory and reading a lot of science fiction, and I'm trying to um, rewatch uh, Star Trek Deep, Deep Space Nine because I miss a bunch of the seasons when in the '90s when I you know it was on the first time. I managed to made it. Mm-hmm. I, I've made it to season two. I just finished episode two, I think, or three of season two. So that nice. there's that. So uh, I want to have much better. Yeah, I only have another like an hour and no, not an hour, maybe 120 hours left or something like that to watch. I can do that. I've read online it's like five and a half straight days of uh, of running time for uh, Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I can do that. Sure, Worth right? every second. <laughs> okay. Except huh. for the first two or three seasons. Uh-huh. No, I'm kidding. There, there's hey. a lot of great episodes there. You know, honestly, this is it was out at the same time as Babylon 5, and I was much more into Babylon 5 than Deep Space Nine. Uh, but uh, I can see how Deep Space Nine is kind of darker than The Next Generation or Voyager that followed afterwards. Some of the, the plot's uh, content is interesting from a philosophical level, and it has a bar. And I like the fact that, you know, like, like, I hate to say this, but Quark cracks me up now. But that Ferengi, like, 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 literally, he's the comic relief in every episode. Love yeah, that. but uh, we're not talking about Star Trek per se. Maybe we are. Uh, but uh, last week was the San Diego Comic Con, and I've never been. And apparently, there was a whole whack of news, especially from Marvel, that was released there. So we're going to talk about it, at least most of it, anyways. And I've been busy, so I have to rely on Derek and Carrie to inform me of uh, breaking news or news out of the the Comic Con and, and and fill in the blank spaces in my mind. How is that? Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, we could start with DS9 because we learned that yeah. in season three of Lower Decks, they're going to visit DS9. And I don't know if characters are going to be appearing voiced by the voice actors, but we do know they're going to Deep Space Nine. So that's And they're very, going to very fly cool. around Deep Space Nine at least a couple of times. Yeah. Great. How's that work? slow, boring music plays. <laughs> but that that happens after the timeline, right? Uh, after, like, like, Lower Decks is happening when in the Star Trek Lower Decks timeline? takes place after Nemesis, so it's well after the series ended. Yeah, that's yeah. what yeah. ended. Because they made yeah. uh, mention of Voyager before, right? And making fun of Janeway. Was that? Yeah, so yeah. Voy- yeah. Voyager has returned. The Voyager series ended. DS9 series ended. The Nemesis movie aired. Riker and Troy are still on the Titan, mm-hmm. yeah. along with the clone of, Voy- of Voimler now. Yes, but is Quark still open? Presumably we'll find so. Out. Yeah, and, and I just rediscovered this like last week. I can't believe D Space Nine has uh, a regular at the bar at Quirks by the name of Morn. That's amazing. That just kills me. Morn, Norm from Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> That's so on the yeah, nose. And he's such a, <laughs> so and he's such a chatterbox. <laughs> except except when we see him. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that. I love that running gag. Oh God, that's great. That's great. So what do you guys think of this? Uh, the, the fact that they bring Deep Space Nine into the world of Lower Decks? Well, we actually kind of already saw bits and pieces of Lower Decks because uh, uh, Mariner was apparently on, on Deep, DS9 uh, earlier in her career. Okay. That would, uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's like a throwaway go- gag for it. But I'm, I'm very excited to have DS9 on the show because DS9 is still my favorite Trek after everything. And I love 
lower deck. So this is peanut butter and chocolate for me. Oh, God. Hey, do you think Mariner has mm. some like legacy stuff happening in the Space Nine like, in terms of, I know, friends or lovers or, you know, did she put some graffiti initials under the bar or something like that? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure she's. I'm sure she's tagged something in, something on the space station. Ah, great. Uh, so what else? Was there any other Star Trek news out of uh, San Diego? Oh, yes, there's the... there's there's going to be a crossover with um, Strange New Worlds with Lower Decks, and Franks is going to direct it, which is going to be amazing. Apparently. Right. So is it... this is making me so happy. It's just, it's so strange to me. So is it going to be a combination of animation and live action? Is it going to be straight live action? Is it going to be animated only? Is it going to be in they, black they and white? It's going to be what? like Roger Rabbit. The Lower Decks characters will be animated and they will be on the live action uh, Enterprise ship in Strange New Worlds, no, which I think is they weird. Think they might be, I think they might actually end up being live action. No, I think yeah. they actually said they're going to be literally animated. <laughs> I read that somewhere. I don't know. Uh, to to me, that was the biggest shocking reveal out of everything from Comic Con, because like all the Marvel stuff was was cool and all, but it was all kind of stuff we were expecting. But doing a crossover between Strange New Worlds and um, Lower Decks was crazy. Like at first, I thought, oh, okay, so like on Lower Decks cartoon, they'll go to the Enterprise, but no, they're doing it on the live action Strange New Worlds show. And it's a Roger Rabbit animated crossover. Like to me, that's crazy that they would do that. That's just like so completely nuts. But I love it. Yeah, yeah. I have no, I have no idea. I have no idea how it's actually going to work. But I am, I am totally there for it. The the one thing that kind of concerns me though is like the fact that they're animated. Doesn't that kind of suggest that they're not real? You know, because no. like to me, they should be live action because then that implies that the events of Lower Decks are fully canon. But if they're a cartoon, doesn't that mean that they're not the same reality as the canon reality? Not necessarily. I mean, with Star Trek, the animated series is, you know, animated and things have been pulled from that, too. Yeah, but to literally have a cartoon character standing next to a live action character, it suggests that they're not the same thing in you know? I think you're overthinking this and I know, I that however it works will be awesome yeah great uh, is that paperclip guy from lord Dex gonna be here that's not his name Aggie? That, yeah Aggie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, yeah and i'm still terrified of of badgy <laughs> oh wow yeah there's gonna be nightmares abound that's for sure. Uh, there, uh, we got some stuff. Uh, there was some uh, new little uh, video of Picard season three. I saw that online. Yep. And any news from uh, season three? Just that the entire the, the the band's gotten back together. Plus, you know, seven nine and Rappy. Yeah, they just... we did learn that the villain is going to be a woman, and I, I don't know if it's supposed to be like uh, some previous character or not. But that that kind of racked my brain because it's obviously not going to be the board queen again. So, like, what female villain in DS 9s past could that possibly be? In Picard's past, you mean? Picard, did, wait, did I say DS9? I meant to say Next yeah, Generation. Yeah, Because <laughs> yeah, uh, we already know Lursa, Lursa and Bator it, died in Generations. Right. Oh, it can't be I, them. Maybe, maybe it'll be Sela. Oh, yeah. That's it. That could be. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think with San Diego, I think most of the news I saw, which I did my uh, quick research yesterday, was from Marvel, because Marvel announced uh, additions to what, Phase 5 and Phase 6. Please correct me if I'm mm-hmm. wrong. Mm-hmm. And, yep, yep. Wow. So, uh, you know, I actually, what well, the trailer for She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, was probably my favorite because I think I need more comedy and, you know, she's an attorney. And I know her from Black Hole. I'm, sho- I'm shocked. And, and she's Canadian from Regina, Saskatchewan. Yeah, there's there's that. Oh, th- the actor, not the, not the character. So uh, what do you make of all this Marvel news? I, it's a lot. And I'm here for it all. Okay. I need to clone myself so I can watch. Like, I'm gonna need to clone myself so I can watch everything. Okay, let's start with the most important uh, announcement: uh, the five short films for uh, Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> have seen Have you seen that trailer? My God, it's so cute. Be adorable. I can't wait. <laughs> it's like Baby Yoda for Star Wars. Groot is where it's at for the kids. Imagine all the action Disney Plus is gonna get. 
you know? Uh-huh. The, it's going to make the parents so happy just to put on Disney Plus and walk away and let the kids watch it. Yeah. But they're short, so it'll only yeah. take like a, like an hour and a half. Yeah, true. But uh, if you haven't seen that trailer, it, it, it's really cute. Uh, definitely check that out. I am Groot. I love the fact that Disney Plus is doing these like one-offs or special little uh, packages. Uh, I think it's great. They've already done a few for Pixar characters. Like, uh, well, it's not Pixar, but they they just did one for Baymax that I just yeah, finished watching. Yeah, that one was really good. And they did one for Up as well, starring the dog Doug. Those were cute. Mm, interesting. Uh, but of course, if you look at the more serious content, I hate to be the one to say what's serious and what's not, but uh, I am anyways. Uh, I think Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, that looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm amazing. Although I have a I have a bone to pick with a certain segment of of the internet that is worried about what if one if Shuri is going to be the next Black Panther and two if she's going to be training during the movie. Like, hello, she is the she is a royal princess in a of a country that has. Dorilaje, and you're wondering if she's not trained. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we already saw her see, fighting. Did in you Black see Panther. the end of Black? Pa- did you yeah. see the end of Black Panther? Did you see the end of of Endgame? She, yeah, she may she may fight more with science than with the with her fists, but she could kick someone's ass if she wants to. All right, cool. Do we know who the new <clears throat> new Black Panther is? Or do we? What's like the theories out we there? We don't. But is that it's in the there's theories yeah. that. There's, I think there's theories that it might be Shuri or Mbaku. Hmm. Well, I'm I'm of the opinion that based on that one freeze frame of Black Panther's back at the end of the trailer, to me that looks like a man. It looks like like a like a thickly built man. I don't think that can be a woman. Uh huh. So that that kind of limits the options. Yeah. Who you knows? Say that now. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, I mean, it certainly doesn't look like a like a like a slightly built woman. It looks like someone like muscular. Um, I know I know lots of muscular women. Oh yeah, certainly. But so, I mean, like 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 Shuri. It doesn't look like Shuri. Like she's you know, thin. But I, before this, I I would have said it, would, it was going to be Shuri just because in the comic books she becomes the Black Panther replacement. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not going to save you there, Derek. Okay, I'm not going to destroy the lifeline. Just, just keep, just keep digging, just keep in the hole, Derek. It's fine. No, 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 I'm not saying it's a, it's, I'm not saying it's uh-huh. a bad thing at all. I'm just saying it, it didn't look like a woman. Not, not that it can't be a woman, and I'm 100 percent for it being a woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm looking forward to this because I really enjoyed the first Black Panther because it dealt with very serious issues in a way that was. Uh, uh, it was watchable, it was enjoyable, and it had an influence on the, the world we live in, the real world. So hopefully oh, yeah. the second, the sequel of Black Panther uh, is going to be very similar, that has something to be to, to say philosophically and politically. Then there's, of course, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Because who doesn't Wait, need more Before Guardians? we move on, yeah. uh, I, I just want to mention that the trailer introduces Namor, Hmm. And and that's that's very exciting. And they're they're doing it very differently than in the comic books. They're making him uh, kind of like of Aztec origin. Hmm. So rather than using Atlantis in the comic books, they're trying to avoid the Aquaman comparison. So they're using different naming and uh, uh, cultural background for it. I, so it's supposed to be like a, a lost Aztec kingdom. I saw something about them changing Namor in the comics to be more, to have his background be more Aztec. I could be wrong though. Hmm. In the comic books or in the movie? In the com in the comics they in the comics apparently they there there's um I saw something about them changing the origin in the comics. And I, I read the comic books and I haven't seen anything like that, but I could be wrong. So well, well, I could I could be it could be the the cold beds talking too. So I. <laughs> So that's uh, the the character from uh, the Aztec is going. It's going to be the villain, or, or or we don't know yet. Well, we don't know. Namor's Namor's kind of like an antihero, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he, he's an asshole. He's he's sometimes a hero, sometimes a villain. He's he goes back and forth like Magneto. Hmm. Like we don't have much uh, superhero representation from from South America, at least not in the English press, and that'd be great to see. If they bring in the yeah, Aztecs definitely. or, you know, the Mayans or the Incas. I mean, based on the know. trailer, 
Based on the trailer, it looks like Namor is invading Wakanda and that he's the villain of the piece. So why would you invade Wakanda for the... Uh, Resources, man. Yeah, what's the name of the metal why is guy? Anyone, why, is, why, is it, why does anyone invade anything? Land, land. Uh, well, what's Land the, and resources. What's the name of... Okay, help me out here. What's the name of the metal, the power of the... Vibranium. Sub, vibranium. Thank you. I'm having a brain fart because I'm owed. Uh, yeah. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, although, although uh, according to X-Men Origins Wolverine, uh, Advantium also crashed landed in, in in Africa, so it could be that too. Hmm. I mean, if we're going... If, if, if that's still relevant to the, the current timeline and all that. Yeah. Fair enough. Now, of course, we have Guardians of the Galaxy. We have Ant-Man 2 and the Wasp. Uh, even have Captain America, New World Order. Ant-Man 3. Ant-Man 3, yeah. How do you say that? Quantum Mania? Quantum Mania. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Got to put quantum in front of everything. Right, because it's such a small story. Get it small? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I, what do you guys make of it? You know, we have you know Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Quantum Mania. We've Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. We have Captain America: New World Order. Uh, it's you know uh, it, it's these sequels, and they're changing things up a bit, especially in terms of Captain America with a new Captain. What's your expectation? I think you guys know me well enough to know that I have no expectations. <laughs> I, I'm just going to go in and watch and be entertained. Yeah. Derek? I'm excited for all of these things. Uh, Guardians 3 is the big James Gunn finale for his character, so it's going to be great for that reason. We also learned at Comic-Con that I don't know how to say his name, but the guy who played Mern in Peacemaker is going to be playing the High Evolutionary in Guardians yes. 3. And we also know that Adam Warlock is going to be in it, so those are two big-time comic book characters. And it's also going to involve a lot of Rocket Raccoon's origins, so we're going to see a little tiny baby rocket raccoon. So that should be cute, except for the part where he's being tortured and ripped apart and mm. cybernetically enhanced. That part will be bad. But that that one will be really cool. And I'm I, I'm one of the few people who really, really loves Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think that is just such a funny, charming movie. So I'm really excited for the third one. But it's going to be even better because this is the proper introduction of Kang the Conqueror to the Marvel Universe. So it's going to be huge for that. And apparently in there was a trailer only aired at the Comic-Con that was not put online, but it showed MODOK is going to be in it. I don't know yeah, if anybody... Yeah, apparently MODOK's going to be the villain. Who is MODOK? Educate me, please. MODOK um, is a big head with tiny arms and feet that floats around, and he's evil. It's, a, it's an acronym, mental organism designed only for killing. And he's basically like a running gag in the, in the Marvel Universe because he looks ridiculous. And he's supposed to be super smart, and he's the leader of AIM, Advanced Idea Mechanics, but he hardly ever has any real success. And uh, Hulu last year did a claymation uh, comedy show starring him with Patton Oswalt as the voice of him. That was a really cute show. You should check it out. But yeah, like Modoc is basically like a joke in the Marvel Universe, so he'll probably be a joke in this movie as well. But I'm very excited to see Kang's introduction in the Marvel Universe. Interesting. And what about Captain America? It's a new world order. Are we, uh, is there going to be peace on Earth? What do you guys think? Will humans get, to get along with you? Peace with on each Earth? Other? What? No, <laughs> of course not. Oh, God. That, that one we don't really know anything about. We just know like who's writing and directing it. And we know that, obviously, Sam Wilson is Captain America. We have no idea who the bad guys are. There is. I did see some speculation online that the Red Skull is going to come back. But I don't really see that happening given the fact that he's like the stone keeper now so i don't know who the red will be hmm. or what? it could be multi it, it could be a different red skull or it could be the multiverse yeah yeah that's true hmm. but yeah that, that one's kind of a blank slate for me since we know so little about it but i'm obviously it'll be great as everything is yeah and then we have a whole walk of of uh tv shows which uh they announced but with very little information please correct me if i'm wrong I'm just going to read a bunch of them out and you guys can jump in, okay, afterwards. Uh, so we have The Marvels, Thunderbolts, Fantastic. That's going to be a movie. The Marvels is a movie. Yeah, Marvels. Thunderbolts is a movie too, I believe. Fantastic mm -hmm. Four, Avengers the also Kang. Also a movie. Avengers the Kang Dynasty. Avengers, also a movie. Avengers Secret Wars. Uh, I think that's going to be a movie. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah, that, that's the big finale to the multiverse saga. Right. Uh, we have Blade, a remake, right? 
And that's going to cut deeply. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully it's on point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, I mentioned She-Hawk, attorney at law. Yeah, go attorneys. Great, you great. Pe- great people. All of them, right? Yeah, whatever. Uh, then it, other TV shows, Secret Invasion, Echo, uh, Loki Season 2. Uh, we are getting a Season 2 of What If. We knew that. They uh, announced that there's going to be a Season 3 of What If. So what if, if there's a Season 3 of What If? Nice. You know, nice. uh, Iron Heart, Agatha, Coven of Chaos. I like that name. It's very uh, hey. w- witch-like, yeah. And uh, Daredevil, the Daredevil, born again. Since didn't they kill uh, Daredevil? Correct me wrong. In the series on no, that Charlie Cox is co- Charlie Cox is coming back. Yeah. And we don't know how or if they're going to work the original three seasons of Daredevil into the show, or if this is going to be completely new, or what's all going to happen with that. So, but I mean, Charlie Cox is back. Uh, what's his name? Vincent Vincent is back. Vincent D'Onofrio is back. So, yay! So you're saying to me this could be two TV shows on at the same time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and two characters in these two TV shows will be both lawyers? That's no, what you're saying will to be me. On a different time. Uh, they different. will not be on at the same time. But <laughs> there is, but apparently Daredevil is going to show up on on She-Hulk at least once. Yeah, yeah, Imagine, he showed up in the chart. Yeah. You mentioned their opposing counsel. You know, that'd be great. <laughs> that was it's certainly done that in comic books. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I, I personally think that the Daredevil thing is gonna not use the Netflix shows as strict continuity, or if, if so, they'll make like very vague references to similar events. And the other big thing about the Daredevil show is that they're doing eighteen episodes, which is a lot more than any of the other Marvel shows have been doing. Yeah, that's like three seasons worth of yeah of a normal a normal Disney Plus show. So yeah, yeah. Let me get through the but whole Star to, Trek uh, franchise first, then I'll move on. Okay. <laughs> but to uh, to talk about some of the things that Joel was just mentioning, uh, Captain Marvel two, aka the Marvels. I'm very excited about that. I loved Captain Marvel one. I love Brie Larson as Carol Danvers, and I was. And I have been very disappointed that we basically haven't seen her since her introductory movie. She's just kind of made cameos ever since then. Like, I thought she was going to star in Endgame, and she's barely in it. Well, she's been ha- she's had other shit to do. Yeah, and, I know. And, and apparently she got interrupted doing whatever shit she's been doing because now she's, you know, hanging out in Kamala's closet. Yeah. Great. So I'm, I'm very excited for that one. And uh, I can't wait to see the Thunderbolts because they're kind of like the, the suicide squad of the Marvel Universe. They're a team of all villains that works for the government. And there's already so many existing characters in the MCU that we could have on that team. We could have a uh, ghost from Ant-Man and the Wasp. We could have, have Lena Black Widow 2. We could have U.S. Agent. We could have Baron Zemo, who created the team in the comic books originally. So there's so many possibilities for cool characters to meet and cross over in that. Well, and, and Val's been kind of putting that team together too. So yeah, yeah, we we've been quietly setting it up in the background all along. And uh, Fantastic Four, we know nothing about it. We don't know who's doing, who's making it, who's starring in it. But it'll be very nice to finally see the MCU do a take on it. The one thing we do know is that Kevin Feige said they're not going to do an origin story. They're going to t- do the Spider-Man treatment of just kind of like jump to them being established heroes already. Hmm. Oh, good. Which, it, which I think is just as well, because it's the same problem with the Spider-Man movies. We've already seen his origin twice. Do we really want to sit through a third origin story of it within recent memory? Um, it, it's also the same problem with Batman. And, and, yeah. and the, uh, the new season of Harley Quinn just, just made fun of that, which was... I didn't watch Hilarious. it. I, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. But yeah, uh, Harley Quinn just made fun. Made, just made fun of you know the car, the constant repeating of uh, Batman's origin. Do you think uh, we'll see echoes or at least uh, images of the Fantastic Four taken from uh, the latest Doctor Strange movie? Uh, I the, don't know. I don't think so. I, I don't oh, think they're gonna one use off. Krasinski. I think that was a one-off. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. It's. I mean, they they did they did use him because because of fan casting, but w- whether they're going to keep him around for the actual MCU or not, it's going to be um, 
is we we'll find out, I guess. Mm-hmm. I would say that they're going to get a younger and less known cast so that they can lock them down for multiple movies. Cause I'm sure the fantastic are going to be playing a huge role in the future going forward. And you know, how many times are you going to get Krasinski to come back and do that? Hmm. Well, hopefully it's a success. You because, never know. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic four. It's not like there's been a, a, you know, previous movies about them that done so well. No, not at all. No, no, no. Uh, so what else, Derek? What else catches your eye? I am excited about Secret Invasion, which was a major storyline in Marvel Comics. It's mm-hmm. about, well, in the comic books anyway, it's about a scroll infiltration of the planet Earth to take it over. So the whole thing is like, who do you trust? Because heroes and villains have been replaced by scrolls and they're infiltrating all of the super teams for like a big uh, fifth column attack. And we know it's going to star Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. So... It's interesting that they're doing it as a TV show and not as a movie because that was a major summer crossover in the comic books. So the question does kind of become, well, how, what is the scope of this story going to be? Like, obviously, it's not going to be about the Avengers being infiltrated because it's just a TV show. But I'm I'm still very excited about that one. How, how can you say, obviously, it's not because the Skrulls could be anyone? Right, but I'm saying, like, they're not going to have the entire Avengers team appearing in a a television show, Secret Invasion, you know what I mean? Like, there isn't even an Avengers team at the moment, anyway, because this will be before Avengers 5. Hmm. Okay. It makes me wonder about some of our customers at the bar, but, uh, yeah, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Well, the the way you find out if someone is a scroll is you kill them, and then their body revolts, reverts to a green scaly monster. So if you have any problems, that's how you find out. Okay, no, that uh, we we should put that in our employee uh, manual. Yeah, and of course, our biggest things are Avengers five and six, the Kang Dynasty, and Secret Wars. And as a matter of fact, just this weekend, I read the comic book storylines, the Kang Dynasty, and Secret Wars in preparation. So I'm very excited about that. And it's also big news that we're getting two Avengers movies in the same year because one comes out in the summer and one comes out in the fall. So obviously it's going to be like a a part one, part two affair like Infinity War and Endgame would be. Fantastic. Now, would you guys consider it spoilers if I tell you what happened in a comic book that came out 20 years ago? Um, You know what? Let's not. Okay. All right. Let's let let people people learn about it themselves. If If they want to read it, they can read it. Okay, well, check them out. They're good comic books. See, right. Secret Wars, there's actually two different Secret Wars. The original one in 1985 was the first major uh, Marvel comic book crossover, and it basically created the tradition of doing a huge crossover every year or so. It was the first time they kind of showed all these heroes getting teamed up together. And then there was another one in 2015 that was the finale of Jonathan Hickman's Avengers run, and it kind of functioned as a kind of like a loose re. Well, I probably shouldn't do anything. So I say there's two different Secret Wars comic books. My my, I imagine that it, they'll be taking more from the more recent one from 2015. But I, I I'll refrain from saying too much about those comic books aside from well, there, go read them and then they'll be great stories. Yeah, well, there movies. there was also a th- uh, three episode arc in Spider-Man the Animated Series from the 90s um, that did the Secret Wars. Yeah, that was a very loose adaptation of the 1985 version of Secret Wars. Yeah. So it's like, is this like Fight Club? You don't talk about the Secret Wars because they're secret. I'm trying to talk about them. (laughs) Spoil. Oh man, I'm just psyched for Loki too. You know, Loki is the best thing on uh, on Marvel in the last year or two, in my opinion. Yeah, that's my favorite. At least it's connecting with me the most. So uh, I'm not sure what that tells Mm -hmm. people about myself, but uh, yeah, Loki, I'm a fan. I'll vote for him for America. And I'm sure that's going to be very important to the whole Kang storyline since it ended with Loki being stuck in Kang's, you know, stronghold. Yeah. Well, one of one of the Lokis got stuck in Kang's stronghold. The other Loki is who knows where. Yeah, imagine if we live in a multiverse where there's multiple Derricks. <laughs> you know? And you finally have a best friend. <laughs> oh, no. 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 Oh, God, let's just move on. The pure sorcery. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the Agatha. Uh, yeah, Agatha, Coven, uh, Coven of Chaos. How do you make... Like, is Agatha a, a villain? She's a villain, right? So you have a TV show based on a villain. Like Loki, but kind of, but not quite. <laughs> okay. 
I don't know, but I I'm all for it. I want I I want to see more Agatha because Agatha was awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, in the in the comic book, she's a good person, and they decided to kind of make her be villainous for the TV show. Because in the comic book, she's actually the uh, nursemaid for Wanda's children. Right. I think. Yeah. 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 Like she she was she like helped raise the babies when they were little. Hmm. Amazing. Uh, yeah, I really love the actor who plays her, uh, which is... Yeah, Catherine Hahn. So, uh, yeah, Catherine Hahn. Yeah, amazing. She's such a a, a fine, refi- refined actor. Uh, yeah, I, she just plays the role, like, amazingly, in my opinion. Having, like, with myself, knowing nothing about the character. Yeah, yeah I like it. I like it a lot, guys. Yeah. Uh, well, but... Uh, sh- any last thoughts about the Marvel news before we move on to other uh, co- content out there? It was kind of odd that they made no mention of Armor Wars because that's supposed to be the one starring Rhodey, uh, Don Cheadle. Mm-hmm. They didn't make a single mention of it. I mean, as far as we know, it's not canceled. Maybe they're just waiting to announce it at D23. But uh, that's one of the shows I was looking forward to. And uh, Ironheart, it's, star- it's basically... An Iron Man spinoff that stars a, a young girl who, who builds a suit of armor like Iron Man. And Riri Williams, who is Ironheart, she's actually introduced in Black Panther 2. And you can see her in the trailer working on a suit of metal the same way Tony Stark did in the cave in Iron Man 1. So we'll meet her yeah. there and then she'll go on to get her own show. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see. Hopefully it's yeah, be. well cast because it sounds so metal. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> okay, let's break with that. Uh, right, uh, DC. So apparently, there's not a lot of DC news besides the trailer for the s- sequel for Shazam: Fury of the Gods. Is that right? There was the Shazam: Fury of the Gods trailer. There was a new trailer for Black Adam, hmm. and there was a new trailer for Sandman, which starts next week. Ah, yes, I want to talk about Yay. Sandman a lot because I actually dove into my comics I got when I was a teenager in high school. And I have several uh, Sandman comics, believe it or not. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's that. So I was reading them back in the day. Who knew? <laughs> you know. I, I, so, I never read Sandman in my life. And last night I read the first eight issues for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. Cool. And then you went the to sleep. The art was back. not that good, mm-hmm. but it was interesting. And then you went to sleep afterwards, I take it? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. So uh, Sam, yeah, was... I'll be very curious to see how they do the TV show of it. I know. Well, the... I know the I know the audio drama has been amazing, so I I highly recommend that if you haven't listened to it yet. Yeah, I know. Uh, Neil Gaiman has been doing a lot of press, and he's all over Twitter about talking about it. Uh, I can't wait. And apparently, uh, he could have uh, the Sam could have been like its own movie you know, twenty years ago. But uh, Neil Gaiman was waiting for a better offer so that they could actually do a long version of it. So like a 10-episode or 8-episode miniseries is the way to go to tell the, the full story. So it's definitely going to be arky, which I can't wait. Okay, well, I mean, considering that Acts 1 and 2 of the audio drama are like 16 hours each, <laughs> and they're working on Act 3 right now, and that's going to finish up the graphic novels... Yeah, I don't. I don't think you could truncate the Sandman into one movie. Yeah, hopefully, it won't pe- put people to sleep. <laughs> Ayo. Hopefully not. Uh, dream it. Don't dream it. Be it. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what else? Why is Sandman exciting? Besides the fact that you know there was comics back in the nineties and an audio drama. Like, well, it's it's Neil Gaiman's most famous work, and mm-hmm. I, like I said, I I only started reading it last night, so I, I have zero familiarity with it. I just know it was been very critically acclaimed, and I, I think it was the book that basically created the Vertigo line at DC Comics. Yeah, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, because they also, they also gave like, rise to the characters of Lucifer and Constantine and all these other like darker characters in the DC universe. Yeah, because like DC, DC Comics was, it, it would always be like just like superhero comics. And then when they created the Vertigo imprint, they kind of started making more mature rated R stuff with, you know, sex and violence in it. And it became its own continuity. And I guess that happened somewhere along the way because the Sandman comics I read last night have like Superman and Justice League characters in it. And I was like, what the yeah. hell is this? 
Mm-hmm. And I guess at one at some point they just decide to make it their own universe. That's awesome. I have one with uh, well, Sam and, and Orpheus. There's another one with Death. So uh, and is is Vamps DC? Yeah. I found a bunch of Vamps like a sexy vampire comic line. I'm not sure why I bought this Vamps. as a teenager. I, I or, don't. I don't know uh, that. Uh, yeah, I don't know that, that one. one. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Uh, but speaking about being a teenager, Dungeons and Dragons. There's a movie. Honor Among Thieves, starring Yay! Uh, Chris Pine. Mike that trailer others. was really cute. Yeah, usually Dungeons and Dragon movies are stupid, but this one looks. Has, well, this one has potential because the humor with the hey. thieves. And, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, correct me. Right I here. I like the original. I really like the original Dungeons and Dragons from 2000. <laughs> okay, it was fair enough. it was it wasn't it wasn't great, but it was fun and. You know, there are a lot of things that, like, if you've ever if you've ever done a D and D campaign, it's like, oh, there's some out of character moments that that somehow someone oh someone botched the roll there, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it's definitely J- Jeremy Irons' finest acting moment. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> wow, yeah, I actually I haven't seen that movie in forever, and I and I wanted to look it up, but apparently it's not free streaming anywhere right now. Hmm. This is why I have it on DVD. Yeah. And she admits that. No, yeah, I mean. <laughs> that, that trailer looked really cool. It's got Chris Pine, Pine in it, so I'm sure he'll be funny and charming and cool. Chris Pine's playing a bard, yeah. so maybe we'll get maybe maybe he'll sing at some point. Yeah, him playing the lute. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> okay, but it's not the only you know, Swords of Sandals movie uh, or series we're getting because we have Lord of the Rings: Rings of Power from Amazon uh, uh-huh. Prime Woo-hoo! Prime Video. Yay! And then we get Game of Thrones: House of the Dragon. So an extended trailer was released here. So you have two new trailers basically in the last week and a half. And both of the shows are going to be showing up on your TV screen very soon. Yes. More drag- we all need more dragons in our lives. <laughs> I hope that they do a good job on the Lord of the Rings. Because you're dealing in a timeline that Tolkien didn't write very much about. Uh, and mm. So there's a lot of gaps there. And hopefully they respect Tolkien yet tells, you know, will tell a compelling story. With Game of Thrones, House yeah. of the Dragon, uh, I'm still, I want to say bitter, but I'm still disappointed about the last season of Game of Thrones. So they really have to work at getting me back to, you know, to, uh, to, to make my passion for that series where it was before. So uh, mm. hopefully that's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about Lord of the Rings because I'm a huge Tolkien nerd. And so that, that's like my number one anticipated show for the rest of the year. And House of the Dragons, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll check it out and hopefully it'll be good. But it's not something I'm chopping at the bit bit for. Mm-hmm. And then there's we have other content. Uh, interview with the with the vampire uh, based off the Anne Rice mo- Yes, uh, which does not it's star like really Tom Cruise, so I'm quite happy with that. So. <laughs> hey, I I was ha- I was happy that Anne Rice got proven wrong about Tom Cruise's casting. Right. That movie is still phenomenal. Still have I still have not brought have not been able to bring myself to watch the adaptation of Queen of the Damned, which has the exact opposite effect on everyone. <laughs> I actually I, just I, watched that, that is a my few months book. ago. Oh, yeah, oh, Queen of the Damned is my is one of my two favorite Anne Rice novels, so I I I don't want my heart broken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually read those books a lot when I was in high school. I, I I only I stopped reading after the original five though, so I haven't. I know like eventually she went back to Lestat and wrote more books with him, but I, I never yep. read those. Yeah, I have Are two more. Good? I have, um, yeah, I have, I have two more. I have two more Vampire Chronicles I need to finish, and I need to finish her last novel that she co-wrote with her son, which is the third in the Mummy trilogy. I'm not just not ready. I'm not ready to say goodbye to her yet. And if vampires aren't your thing, we're getting a Teen Wolf movie, guys. Yeah, and we're getting a new a new a new spinoff with Sarah Michelle Gellar is going to be in that one. Okay, cool. So yay! Oh, I didn't hear about that one. You say yeah. Teen Wolf with yeah. Sarah Michelle Gellar? Yeah, oh, yeah. She's she's training she's training her stakes for you know for werewolves. Yeah, it's a uh, it's full of monsters apparently. I don't know. <laughs> it's like the N is nigh. Yeah, huh? that, the, the N is nigh. Yeah, uh, that's the new uh, science one with uh, Bill Nye. <laughs> the, oh, N, yeah. the N is near, N is nigh. Yeah, there you go. There's that. Nice. Six-part miniseries about uh, uh, when things go badly wrong on Earth, how it's going to kill lots of people. Yeah. yeah. 
Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, but before that, uh, of course, we have uh, it's a Predator 5, otherwise known as Prey, or Prey, otherwise known as Predator 5, on uh, Hulu. See, see anything? Yeah, that comes out this Friday. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that's good. Uh, and uh, we get the Walking Dead stuff. So, uh, Tales of the Walking Dead, a limited series. And then we have the final season of The Walking Dead, which has been on for, I don't know, a third of my life. Mm. Yeah, I, I stopped watching that so long ago. I, I... <laughs> uh, yeah, I mm. never got... I like. I prefer my undead to have a liquid diet. Thank you. God. I did read that they're finally bringing back um, Rick and Michonne because they were supposed to do theatrical movies with them. And then coronavirus happened, and then the ratings plummet from the main show happened, and then apparently now it's just going to be like a, a TV miniseries instead of a theatrical movie. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you're looking for more murder and mayhem, there's John Wick 4. You know, Ken Reeves made a yep. surprise exper- uh, surprise uh, uh, appearance, which is great. Yeah. Very much like Ken Reeves. And uh, what's this X-Men 97 business all about? Uh, that's going to be a continuation of the X-Men animated series from the 90s. They're basically picking up where, right where they left. Mm. Although, why this is down here and not up with the Marvel stuff, I don't know. I, don't I was know. wondering about that, too. <laughs> Listen, I did the show notes really quickly, and I had some stuff uh, this morning. So, again, the show notes is not really, you know, it's not a script. It's a guy. You know, talk about whatever you want. It's a bar. We, we, we're allowed to give you shit, Joel. It's okay. <laughs> Right, I was right. a diehard fan of the 90s X-Men cartoon. That was like the cartoon that like birthed my love of comic books and the X-Men specifically. Uh, the The last year or so was not, I think it was like the last season was not great because I, they basically wrapped up the storyline in season four. And then I think they got like an additional order and like the stories were crap and the animation was crap. But the first four seasons of that show were freaking amazing. Mm. And mm. hopefully this will be more like the early seasons and not that last season. I'm sure it will be, but I'm, I'm excited about that. Although I'm not crazy about the fact that they're using the exact same animation style because I don't know, the animation was never that great looking on that show. So I would not have minded if they had made it more modern looking, but Hey, it's nostalgia. I like the animation for the originals that that sort of series and for Spider-Man. Mm. Cool. Uh, speaking of animation, uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Woohoo! So that's another animated series. Am I wrong or right on that one? You don't know about Avatar: The Last Airbender? Oh God, <laughs> I know it's, it's that's my it's, favorite animated. Uh, there's, a, of the, all the, time. Uh, there's an actor that's apparently big who's gonna be on it. Is that help me out here, man? <laughs> uh, Derek, you you know more about this than I do. Well, they well they've they've announced that they're going to be doing a series. Well, I mean, first of all, they're doing a lot of stuff that hasn't been announced yet. They're working on multiple movies and animated series to continue the franchise. But the the main announcement at Comic Con was that the first theatrical movie is going to star the original cast of characters after the original series ended. So it'll be Aang and and his group, and oh, then, and at some point we're going to get a Kyoshi movie she was the earthbender avatar before ang and i believe that oh and then at some point we'll get a Korra movie she was the star of the spinoff series legend of Korra, and i think they also announced that there was going to be a zuko movie starring just zuko after the events of the series but the first one is going to be a proper sequel my question though is does this invalidate the comic books because they've been publishing comic books that take place after the series for quite some time now and it was done with the involvement of the series creators. So I, I'm, I'm kind of concerned that this is just going to wipe out the continuity of the comics, which have been very good. But I am very excited to see them in animated form again. You mean you're concerned that they'll do they'll, they'll pull Star Wars on you and, and re- yeah. reset the timeline? <laughs> They're going to destroy Derek's childhood. Come okay. on. <laughs> okay. Elementary. Childhood. I was like 30 when I saw this cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Was there any other news that I miss? From San Diego Comic Con. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I think that's pretty much all of it. Yeah, I always want to. Kevin Smith showed like the first five minutes of Clerks three, but you know that's not online or anything. Oh yeah, and and the and the first two episodes of uh, Harley Quinn dropped on, it dropped at at Con, but now the th- first three episodes are out on HBO Max. So hmm. that cool. there's that. I know, like Hasbro had a a, a collectible item. 
Uh, the other companies had similar stuff, right? I'm sure Funko had it, its own uh, San Diego, yeah. you know, exclusive. I'm sure. San Diego looks looks wild. It's just the lineups and all that stuff. It's it, it's like Star Wars Celebration on you know uh, on acid, and maybe we'll someday I'll uh, get out there. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you know the fact that they break so much big news on these things, amazing. And, like just trying to be in Hall H where yeah. the big hall is, that, that's kind of once in a lifetime experience if you're lucky enough to get in the hall. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I know. Guys, have you ever been? Nope. No. Nope. Yeah. It's it's on my it's on my bucket list of con con uh, and cons I need to attend. I, I, I'm actually um, going to ST, what used to be STLV at the end of the month, so. Mm. Um, that's, I'm, I'm crossing that one off of my list. I got to win that billion dollar jackpot first before I can go there. Uh, oh God. Oh I, God. I, the more, actually the more I think about it, it's like, like I would like, I would like to be able to go to San Diego Comic Con, but I would actually kind of prefer to just go down there around SDCC weekend and just hang out at like the after parties and stuff. Yeah, I can see that. Like the be- non, yeah. the con, like the con adjacent type shit. Yeah, that works and probably a lot less stressful because you you, you don't yeah. have to see whatever news, whatever uh, you know, franchise that's your favorite. Yeah. And who knows you know, who you will meet in these you know, in, in the hotels, in the side rooms, in the side bars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You might run into Derek one day. Ah. <laughs> oh no, no, I'll I'll be I'll be walking the other way. I'm kidding. Oh god, oh god. Only mostly. Uh, Joel, you mentioned something about a $25 million Infinity Gauntlet. Where did you see that? Hey, that's the thing. Uh, well, well, that's the Jewel thing, right? There were the Marvel was saying you can buy whatever. It was I'm not sure what it was. You, you're the one who told me about that. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. It was a $25 million, Like It was like a, you know, yeah, it, it, it was a marketing ploy thing, right? But you could buy a $25 million Jewel-studded Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, so it's... Media, of course, reported on that because who in the right mind will, will buy that? But it had real jewels on it. Someone who won the billion dollar jackpot, maybe? Yeah, so uh, uh-huh. I, I don't see you wearing it, so obviously you didn't win the lottery. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's probably the same person who buys uh, the $5,000 cocktail out of uh, the Disney Wish in that the Star <laughs> yeah. Wars bar, right? <laughs> okay. I... Oh, God. Like, I'm all for having a good time and spending your own money, but, you know, just the, yeah, the value of money. I'm just that, telling you. That five thousand. That five thousand dollar Drake better get me fucking hammered. Is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah. In one shot. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Just wow. Uh, but before we close our doors, is there anything else, guys, you want to uh, mention? Uh, no. I think I, I think um, I should go try and expel Kermit now. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Congrats, Carrie, for sticking Thank the you. recording out with COVID. You are a champion. Thank you. Thank you. And listening to Derek and myself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's some, it was something to do. To, it was something to do today. Uh, nice, nice. <laughs> hey, Derek. Any last words? I'm excited about everything coming out of the Marvel Studios, and I'm excited about Star Trek Lower Decks and, and Star Trek Card Finale, and everything else. Hopefully, it'll be good. We'll see. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. And, of course, a really big announcement which we had for several months is, of course, Randall Graham's new book, you know, Another Regents, available for pre-order yes. out in, in September. There you go. There you go, Randall. I just plugged your book for you. Love you, man. There's no conflict of interest there, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not try- he's not trying to get less work or anything. No, no, definitely not. So uh, this show is available on most podcast platforms and on YouTube. Subscribe today. For listener engagement announcements, please follow us on Twitter at Sci-Fi Podcast. And if you wish to contact us directly, our email address is management at sci-fi podcast.space. We love hearing from our listeners. Perry, what's your Twitter address? My Twitter handle is Blackfire 42 That's K-E-R-I Blackfire42. And what other podcasts and, are you on? Yeah. Um, I'm also on Cape Chronicles, DC Talk, and um, Enter the Dojo and over on the Random Chatter Network. Yes, Random Chatter Network. Excellent. Uh, Derek, man, what's your Twitter address? I'm at Derek J. Beebe, and my website is DerekBeebe.com. Excellent. And my Twitter address is at Joel, J-O-E-L underscore Welch, W-E-L-C-H. That's it, folks. It's closing time. Take care, and please make it home safely. We see you next time. Bye now. Bye. Bye.
Music provided courtesy of Logan Rathbone. Podcast logo by Jurem. Copyrighted Joe Welch. Listen responsibly. And we can't wait for your next visit to our fine establishment. Cheers.